Welcome to the series where I test out money making methods from the OSRS wiki. Feel free to leave suggestions on which money maker you'd like to see next. And also, if you didn't already know, I have a nice playlist that I've created that has all of the previous money makers that I've already tried. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. With that being said, let's get into the video. So for today's video, we will be doing a money maker that I have not tried before and had not heard about before, which is crafting drift nets. Now just by looking at the page on the wiki, it looks like a pretty decent money maker considering that you can make around 600k an hour and you only need 26 crafting and of course if you want to do the best method you will need a couple of other requirements but they're not too bad. The best method of course is to use the loom on fossil island since it is the closest to a bank but in order to do this you will have to have access to fossil island which means that you will need to have completed the quest bone voyage and you will also need to make the loom and bank chest yourself which is going to require 4 oak planks, 1 rope, 1 iron bar, 10 nails, and 29 construction. Now besides those requirements, all you will need is some starting cash so that you can buy the jute fibers and turn them into drift nets. This is going to be like previous money makers in the sense that the more money you have, the more chill it will be because you won't have to be making multiple trips to and from the GE. But Honestly, with this money maker, you might want to sell off your drift nets after every hour because the prices do fluctuate quite a lot. As for the gear setup, I will be wearing my full graceful along with the max cape. Really, you'll just be wanting to wear whatever weight reducing clothing you have since you will be doing a lot of running. I'm also bringing the explorer's ring 4 because it does give 3 full stamina refills per day. So that'll come in handy in case we do run out of stamina. And then for the inventory, you just fill it up with the jute fibers that you'll be turning into drift nets. And like I said earlier, even if you have a lot of money, I don't really recommend buying more than an hour's worth of jute fibers. For this hour, I just bought 3,000, and honestly, that worked out well for me. If you buy any more than that, you run the risk of losing money since the prices of these items do fluctuate quite a lot. But as for getting there, I am teleporting to my house to use the dig site pendant that I have mounted here. You can use that to go to the dig site and then from there you can run east and travel by boat or by barge, whatever they call this. And then once you do that, you're here at Fossil Island. The loom is north, which is what you'll have to build if you don't already have it done. And then the bank is south, which is not too far away. So this is definitely the best place to do it. As you can see, the drift net is the third option there on the list. And then once you have a full inventory of drift nets, you can just run over here to the bank and bank all of them and repeat the cycle. Now, as for plugins that you can use for this moneymaker, the only one that I really used was the screen markers plugin. And that was just to draw a box over the deposit inventory button. And basically that'll just help out with faster banking. It's not necessary or required, but I find that it helps out whenever I'm doing this for an hour because sometimes I'll just go on autopilot mode and I won't really be paying too much attention but with the box there I know exactly where to click after I open up the bank interface. And that is pretty much it for this money maker. All you'll be doing is just running north to the loom, crafting the drift nets, banking them, withdrawing all of the fiber out again and just repeating the process over and over again for as long as you want. Now as far as shortcuts go, you can use the escape key to close the bank interface and then whenever you are crafting the drift nets, you can hit 3 to craft them and then once you've done that once, you can use the space bar the rest of the time because it'll remember your last option chosen. Now before I started this moneymaker, I thought that I was going to be in Falador using the loom there because that's really the only one that I know of, but luckily there are many other options that you can choose and like I said before, the fossil island loom is the best one so if you have the requirements for it definitely use that one and if you don't well you have like four other options to use so it's not that big of a deal now this money maker is definitely unique like i said it wasn't anything that i had ever done before and the items that i'm that i'm using i had never even seen them before so that goes for drift nets and jute fiber i don't think i've ever planted a jute seed before maybe i don't, honestly don't remember seeing these items but yeah, it was, a, it was a first for me. I've also been asked to do a drift net fishing video for one of these one hour videos. And honestly, it might be a nice follow up to see what these drift nets can do since I know really nothing about them. 
Now besides making drift nets with the jute fiber, there is one other item that you can craft with this item, and that is empty sacks, but it is highly recommended not to do that because it takes twice the amount of jute fibers. You need four to make one empty sack, and the empty sack is only worth two GP, so definitely not worth to uh, throw away money like that. I'd say overall this moneymaker was pretty enjoyable just because of how AFK it was. The only part that really wasn't AFK was running back and forth, but for the most part you're just standing there at either the bank withdrawing your inventory or at the loom building the drift nets. And you end up standing there for so long that your stamina actually can regenerate most of the stamina that you actually spent getting there. I believe our stamina lasted us all the way until I believe the last five minutes and then we had to use the ring to get the refill so for 55 minutes we didn't have to drink any stamina potions or anything that would increase our stamina. This is of course however with 99 agility and the full graceful set so just keep that in mind. Now in the beginning of the video I said that it was very important to price check all of the items that being the drift nets and the jute fibers and the reason you want to do this is because these items are very volatile they change in price a lot after I sold the drift nets that I had after finishing the one hour I logged off for a bit and then I logged back on a couple hours later and sold the jute fibers and they had already dropped quite a bit in price along with the drift nets so make sure you double check the prices on all of the items that you'll be using so that you can see if the margins are still good and if this is still a viable money making method now, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my last video that I made. It was the green dragon video in the wild and how I used a different account for the one hour of money making. Now, I got people on both sides, people saying that they enjoyed seeing a lower level do some of these money makers. And then I had some other people say that they didn't like it very much, that they prefer seeing the maxed accounts do it. And honestly, I can't win. I, I can't please everybody. So I don't know. And honestly, it's not even just with the account builds, it's also whenever I'm just using my max account and I use certain items, some people will say, oh, we want to see you do it with, you know, maxed out gear. And then other people are like, we can't afford this, we want to see you do it in budget gear. So honestly, I think I'm just going to keep mixing it up and then maybe in the future I'll revisit some of the old videos and try it out with different account setups and different gear setups. But besides that, the video still got really good um, support. You guys seem to enjoy the little mix of pvp and pvm so i will definitely consider doing those in the future and as i am speaking right now i currently have the pure in nmz training up the range and strength and with that being said we have finished the one hour of crafting drift nets and we also managed to get a nice little lamp from the genie that we will probably be using on either agility or rune crafting but we can now see how many nets we made in the one hour 1162 which is going to be valued at 3.6 mil, almost 3.7 mil, so not bad after one hour. We definitely made more nets than what the wiki suggested, which is nice. Now, unfortunately, before selling these, I did price check to see what they were going for, and they were going for around 28.52, but I decided that I didn't want to take that much of a loss on them, so I just put them in there for close to 3,000, a little bit underneath that, and then I let them sit there. and. They honestly sold pretty quickly. I was quite amazed. Like I said, this item is very volatile. It changes in prices all the time, so just be careful with that. I'd say it took about maybe two hours to sell everything, which wasn't too long, so not bad. And as you can see here, almost 3.5 mil in the price checker, so still a decent amount considering that we did make more nets than what the wiki said, so it wasn't that big of a deal taking a small loss on the profits. So now if we take a look at how much money we spent on supplies, which was 2,823,660 GP, and we subtract that from the total amount of money that we made, which was 3,482,514 GP, we get a grand total profit of 658,854 GP. And as you can see here, it is pretty comparable to what the wiki had estimated for us. Of course, we didn't get quite the best margins like the examples here in the wiki show, but we managed to make more drift nets in an hour than 900, so that's what we made up for the loss of profits. And we still ended up making more than what the wiki said, so that's always a good thing. I just want to say thanks for checking out the video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and possibly a subscription. 
And as always, I will catch you guys in the next episode.